Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Well, what a week it's been for crypto markets and for stocks. We're going to talk about why they're down so much and why cryptos have certainly had a great run this week. I've got my altcoin shirt up, Bitcoin Cash up 150% this week. We're going to go over all those headlines like normal, guys. But on this day in crypto history, well, it was only a year ago when Bitcoin did touch near that 20K mark before just five days later falling to $10,400. So we know that crypto is volatile. It has these boom and bust cycles. If you're a believer in the technology like me, you believe that this is just another normal correction before the next bull run. We like to talk about macroeconomics on the channel as well, and if you've watched my channel for some time now, you'll know that these are my top 10 finance and economic documentaries I recommend everyone watches to go down the rabbit hole to really learn about this stuff, how it all works, banking system, money, debt, and governments, and so on. Once you have those concepts grasped, it really makes all these other things more important. Now, this week for members, I did a detailed video about investing versus trading and swing trading and having a good mixed portfolio, all that sort of thing, because I think there's never been a more important time. And I know a few months ago, I sold a lot of my tech stocks and put my um, super into cash and so on. And I actually don't think that this is the big final capitulation. I actually think stocks are really going to go sideways or have a gradual bleed. I don't see this being as bad as 2008 where they just go down you know, 60% in a year. So we're seeing all these doom and gloom headlines. It's had its, um, Dow's had its worst week in 10 years, but this is actually the worst month since the Great Depression. So all these sort of doom and gloom headlines the media like to push out can often mean that you know, a lot of the worst is behind us now, and at least we're going to get some sort of bounce. So it's been a terrible year for crypto, we know. It just about, well, every coin is down. Even the best performers like Binance and Maker are still down 50 or 60%. But this has been the worst year on record for all asset classes. So 93% of all asset classes are down. And this all comes back, and the reason that I showed you that top 10 economics documentary was because because of what central banks and governments are doing. Now, in Australia, the housing market has started to correct a lot faster than what they would have hoped. And they actually reversed some of the um, limits that that imposed on the banks. They didn't want people to, to lend out money uh, in interest-only fashion or just to investors because they believed it was um, inflating a bubble and it wasn't healthy. And now stocks of um, housing have gone down. They're backpedaling. They're saying, oh, you know, oh God, this is falling too fast telling the banks just to lend money out again, give out those interest loan, interest only and investor loans, anything to stop this bubble sort of popping. So this is really funny to watch, um, you know, to watch them squirm, central bankers, um, policy makers of all types. And I spoke about the sort of decisions that whether it's the Australian government, the Federal Reserve, the US, this is their, you know, their tool toolkit. This is all they really have. They can either print money, lower interest rates, have big government interventions um, or huge government handouts and big government spending programs, or hope that we get a huge wave of immigration. Now, in Australia, immigration remains pretty strong, um, a, a lot more so than other countries with their aging demographics and so on. But we're already seeing a few governments start to pull out these things, as I said here, to try and re-inflate housing prices. And this is going to be the same in the US markets with stocks. Now, these stocks have gone up tremendously. They've got a lot of cash on the sidelines. I tweeted about cryptocurrency still being a drop in the ocean. When you look at it like this, the total crypto market, you could buy every cryptocurrency out there um, at current prices with the amount of cash that these companies have on hand. So they've still got a lot of cash. Someone like Facebook started to buy back a lot of their shares this week, trying to you know, re-inflate and form a bottom for their stock price. But I certainly think... Um, times are changing and this has all come about because of the Federal Reserve. So I spoke about the game of chicken that they were playing with the market where the market starts to sell off and that when they talk about raising rates because of how much debt is out there in existence. And the Federal Reserve raised rates again this week and the market didn't like it. And they're talking about raising again further and further next year. And the, this is why we had this absolutely brutal sell-off, the worst week, the worst month, because of how much debt is out there in the world. And the central banks are saying, we want to raise interest rates. We've printed a lot of money. We can't risk inflation and so on. And this all ties into having an understanding of what's going on because 
this is the ultimate game of bluff. And if central banks have to back off and say, look, we're going to have to re-lower interest rates back to zero or even negative interest rates or print more money, then Bitcoin and cryptocurrency absolutely explodes in that situation when the world realizes that this grand monetary experiment that central banks have promised that they can unwind, when that doesn't work, um, that's very, very bullish for cryptocurrencies. So into the crypto news now, guys. Great to see Horizon State making progress. Um, I do want to have them on the channel again soon because they have got a lot of these deals very close and maybe haven't been able to get them over the line or we want to know exactly when all these elections are going to start to take place that use the HST token. So certainly look to have the HST um, team back on the channel with our Where Are They Now series as well. But great to see um, they're claiming this is a world first voting on the blockchain using digital identity. So there has been other voting um, you know, commenced with different projects on blockchain, but um, either way, oh, it's great to see a project that's close to my heart making progress still. So Coinbase expands its trading platform into six uh, additional European countries. So not necessarily markets, there's a couple of uh, smaller sort of provinces, Gibraltar and so on here, but we continue this theme. It's a real race between Coinbase and Binance. Um, to, to have an exchange in every country and we're very lucky if we're in Australia or you know yourselves in, in Europe and America that there's plenty of exchanges and plenty of options but we have to remember some of these countries that you know don't have even ID verification documents it's so hard for them to buy cryptocurrency and that's why we see these volumes on the likes of local bitcoins really continuing to explode in these developing nations now speaking of coinbase they did launch um, Coinbase Earn this week where they want to educate you about different cryptocurrencies as well. So I think last year was the year of you know hype and this year's been the correction and people we're going to find out who's been busy um, building and making progress next year. But next year is going to be all about education and that's all the way from the institutional investor down to the retail investor that might actually know something about what they've invested in. Very few people did their research no matter how many times you told them. And um, I explained to members this morning why I think this one is a very interesting choice and the theory I have about about that as well. The other thing I've been talking about with Coinbase is that lately their picks haven't been getting the follow through that they would have hoped with trading volume and increasing price. And I said I actually think that they're going to list coins like Amisa Go, Maker, Digex, um, Augur, or Golem. Now, this week we got Maker as well as Dai and Golem. So, again, it's great to continue to pick these coins that we believe are going to get listed on fundamentals and there is that switch to coins that I believe have strong fundamentals and have been busy building rather than the coins that everyone's maybe asking for or, or, or get the most hype. So this is great to see. Um, I think these coins that have been busy building are really going to shine throughout 2019 and Coinbase has a serious focus on trying to list these projects. Now, some people are saying that they just want the exchange fees. Of course, they want to get more fees, guys. They're a business. They need to make money. But if they're providing education on the good projects, this sort of opens people's mind up to, hey, cryptocurrency isn't just money. There's, you know, Golem doing decentralized computing. Maker, you know, decentralized central bank or, you know, governance system and stablecoin and Zilliqa high, high throughput blockchain as well. So, Again, I'm happy if people are learning about these new coins. Now, Icon came out with part three of their yellow paper this week, a new roadmap, um, detailed staking calculator. So if you want to know how much money you're going to earn by staking your ICX, guys, this is all on here as well. Um, that roadmap's really matured. I know they're talking about going down even the STO route to help projects launch and so on. So ICX is one that received... Um, a lot of hype last year. I didn't add it to my portfolio, but if they're making good progress and they're down, you know, 96%, that is when I'm sort of considering looking at any of these projects if they're doing good things. Now, IOTA announced a new um, hash function this week. So, CyberCrypt, they continue to try and be leaders in this space. They want to have a secure algorithm for their Internet of Things, for their Tangle. Um, read this announcement if you'd like more details, guys, but IOTA is really going to take off next year if they can remove that coordinator node and have this secure network with, with a different hash function to other algorithms and so on. But that tangle going off in all directions and talking to all other devices, 
if we want to have this truly decentralized, we do need to remove that coordinator node and they tell us that they are making progress on that front. So this week we saw some mainstream companies start to talk about using blockchain payments. Now, Western Union has been one that's been heavily picked on in the crypto community over the years. You know, back in 2013, you'd log into uh, Reddit, Bitcoin subreddit, and everyone would be bashing Western Union for charging 20 or 30% fees for money remittances and telling people to use Bitcoin instead. Now, they're still overcharging uh, for what should be an, a small intermediary job. We know blockchain and cryptocurrency can replace them. And now they're you know, maybe partnering with Ripple, very interesting choice uh, and testing payments. Now, my thoughts are the same for whether it's Facebook or, or Western Union, these big companies that we're trying to move away from and create decentralized versions where it's more about the users and protecting our data and us saving money rather than paying these greedy companies and intermediaries. So look, if, if Facebook is going to put cryptocurrency under billions of users' nose, um, that's fantastic. That's good for awareness. But a lot of the properties that make cryptocurrency great being decentralized, censorship resistant, trustless, we lose all of those as soon as a company like Facebook creates its own cryptocurrency. So for me, this isn't that dissimilar to Venezuela launching the Petro, so sort of saying, you know, trust us, we'll do this, we'll do that. Um, I think this is going to, if it's a stable coin, little payments, familiarizes people with crypto, then sure. But I, I, I really hope that people educate themselves and learn that uh, Bitcoin and those sort of cryptocurrencies are far more important than Facebook coin, which people have joked about over the years, but here it is. Okay, so Monero over 90% has been uh, mined now. And this is something that's going to become a theme in January next year when Ethereum's block reward drops from two um, from three to two, and then the halvening. So Bitcoin's block reward dropping, which happens only every four years in 2020. Now, these sort of headlines are going to be in the news a lot. This will be the first time that Bitcoin halvening has been, you know, in the public eye, um, four years ago, very few people knew about cryptocurrency. So the basics of supply and demand, as something becomes more scarce, inflation, inflation rates remain low. And again, coming back to that central bank policy of printing money, if inflation starts to creep up and these banks have to print more money, cryptocurrency is comparatively such a good choice. That's all I'm going to say there. So consensus, we've been reading these stories. This is a brutal bear market for all these startups, particularly those um, you know, holding ETH that don't have dollars in the bank. They're at the mercy of the market. So you know, we're expecting bad projects to be cut and bad projects to fail. We've always said on the channel, 99% of projects are going to fail. And this is you know, the rea reality unfolding before I eye. So consensus, um, you know, a, a great company. But unfortunately, this is the reality of a, of a brutal bear market. So this week, we see Blockstream talking about adding a, a Lightning node to their satellite program. So they do have decent coverage over some parts of the world already with their, um, their satellites acting as nodes. So this removes the need for an internet service provider. So this very exciting stuff. And obviously, with Lightning Network, lower fees, faster transactions, without even an internet provider. Very, very cool. Um, we saw progress this week, not only with um, a Lightning Network, but with Raiden, which is Ethereum's similar version. So Raiden is now live on Ethereum. It's still in the alpha test phase. But progress is being made, guys. So a lot of people still think that Lightning Network is you know, years away. And we've already seen a huge increase in the capacity of the network, the number of nodes. This is going to happen on Ethereum as well. There's going to be a very rapid increase in uptake. We know how many people are running nodes for Ethereum. There's wallets that are very, very close around the corner. And once this all gets in the public eye with easy to use lightning technology and wallets, good front ends, um, I certainly think that's one of the possible catalysts for the next bull market. Speaking about Ethereum, Vitalik donates $100,000. So for three separate lots of $100,000. He tweeted YOLO. Um, 
what an interesting guy. But these three projects, Prismatic Labs, Sigma Prime, and Chainsafe, are all working on Ethereum 2.0, scaling Ethereum. Good quality teams that look like they're going to run out of funds. And Vitalik has obviously got pretty deep pockets, um, been very early on in Ethereum. And the Ethereum Foundation are giving out grants. So that there's money there. They are going to come to the aid to some extent to the good projects. They're not just going to let the best teams that are trying to scale Ethereum you know, run out of money if, if they're still well off. So that's great to see. There's been lots and lots of news this week, guys. The Daily 10 on nuggetsnews.com.au. Click on news. There's so much more altcoin news there, guys, if you want to read about the smaller coins. Um, thanks to Matt Williamson, who's one of our new contributors, part of the Nuggets News team. Um, he does this just about every day if you want to head to Nuggets News and read some of the smaller news items. So on to the price action. Now, this is the chart, the daily chart of Bitcoin overlaid with shorts. And I speak about shorts and, and longs a lot and how the dumb money, the retail investor often gets in at the wrong time. So as we see here, when price was hovering at around $6,000 before we fell off that cliff, if you can see that there, guys, shorts were relatively low. So not many people were betting it was going to go down. As we say, the public is often wrong. And now we have that big down move, and guess what happens? The shorts pile in. So now that we are down low, lots of people are betting that we're going to go lower. And again, it's dumb money. Retail investors, they tend to get in at the wrong time. And here we are having a decent rally off the lows. Now, one thing we've been talking about a lot is just these simple 12 and 26 period moving averages acting as support. So on the daily time frame, we've had a big run off the lows here, but now we've just come back and, and tested this and it looks as if we're moving off relatively strongly. So okay volume here, but the shorts are still high. So this is what can ignite this short squeeze. And I've been talking about this sh short squeeze um, for this entire period as shorts are getting a little bit too cocky and everyone's thinking now that every bounce is just going to be met with strong selling and roll over. So it doesn't mean we can't have another rally um, in the intermediate phase. The next period we're looking to cool off, guys, here is around the 28th of December into the end of year. You know my theory about over Christmas when there's not a lot of people trading. So maybe this run can last another day or two and then we cool off over Christmas. But you know, Ethereum's had a great run here now. Um, Bitcoin Cash, as I spoke about before, you gotta remember this was trading on part of to Bitcoin Satoshi's vision just a few days ago uh, below $80 and now it's had an incredible move up 200% at, at some stage. So what I'm looking at with any shorts here guys is when they run out of steam, I want to be shorting the coins that have gone up the most. So I'll be watching Bitcoin Cash for a short entry. But at the moment, um, again, the zoom in for clues on the shorter time frames, just acting as support, continuing to hit these averages. And we're right at some pretty important levels, uh, but Bitcoin can probably get up to that sort of mid 4,400, 4,500 is where we're going to encounter a lot of resistance. So this is great to see, guys. Altcoins have had an amazing run. Um, everyone was bearish. A lot of people calling the death of crypto and doing their victory lap and so on. So it's great to see some strength. This doesn't mean that the bottom is definitely in by any chance. Backed is being pushed back again and the ETF. And I think that is what can create a negative narrative. If those get rejected or delayed again, that's when markets could roll over and retest these lows or even make new lows. But um, be patient. We know that big things are coming. Um, I just want to finish off with a couple of messages. So when Bitcoin started to take off this week, Twitter lights up, Facebook groups light up. I get messages from people that I haven't spoken to in years. How do I buy Bitcoin? And no other asset class gives you the same rush. And particularly when stock markets are down and Bitcoin is showing you know, that inverse correlation, this is very, very powerful. Everything is, is looking good on that sort of longer term perspective that we want. So this Christmas, when you're talking to friends and family, educate them about what is a wallet? What is Bitcoin? Why is it important? Give them $10 get them started and obviously hopefully we can help that mission as well guys that's it for this week thanks for tuning in guys smash that like button subscribe if you haven't already share these videos around and thanks for tuning in guys cheers